Hi, fourth grade. We are going to start chapter 12 um, of There's an Owl in the Shower, and this chapter is called Flying Lessons. Okay, here we go. Upon learning that Barty was soon to fly, Leon changed his mind about having him walk behind him down the aisle of the courthouse. Now he envisioned him flying grandly over the heads of lawyers and court clerks. Borden would let Barty sit on his fist. Leon would walk up to the judge and call the owl. Barty would fly across the courtroom, alight on Leon's fist, and nibble his ear lovingly. The judge would marvel, would grow mellow, and say, Case dismissed. <clears throat> Leon no longer said what he would do to Barty after that. Hmm, that's interesting. He's not talking about killing him anymore. <laughs> One morning on the river shore, when Borden had departed for school, he put Barty on a tree stump and stood in front of him. Okay, he said, Borden's not doing so well with you, so I'm going to give you flying lessons. Do what I do. He flapped his arms. Barty flapped his wings. Leon ran in a big circle flapping. Barty took off from the stump, sailed to the ground, and ran in a big circle flapping. As he ran and flapped, the flapping lifted him off the ground. Quick to correct his mistake, he came down and ran behind his mother. Leon halted. Well, so much for that, he said. You make a very good human being, but you're a lousy owl, Barty. You've got to learn to fly, Barty. You've got to fly, for real. Fly over people's heads, fly around the court, and fly down to my hand. He put the owlet back on the stump. Are you always going to walk like me? He asked. Don't you know you're supposed to fly? The owlet looked up at a passing swallow. That's it, Leon said enthusiastically. Do what he does, fly like a swallow. But Barty felt no connection between the soaring bird and himself. When Leon walked off to check the traps, Barty hopped to the ground and walked behind him. Here's a picture of Leon trying to show Barty how to fly. And Barty is mimicking him perfectly, standing on the ground, flapping his wings, just like Leon is doing. <laughs> Unfortunately, not. that's not actual flying. <laughs> okay. When Leon walked off to check the traps, Barty hopped to the ground and walked behind him. They went home early. Leon had been asked to join a group of cutters, truck drivers, and hook tenders, the men who wrestled the trees from the forest. Almost all of them had suffered broken knees or legs, torn muscles, and blows from falling or rolling wood. Yet they loved their work, and they had asked a national TV network to let them tell their side of the controversy. They were to meet in the park at noon. Leon gave Barty a mouse. Barty swallowed it whole. Hey, you've grown up, Leon said. Looks like I don't have to cut up your food for you anymore. Good boy. Barty hopped to the couch. With beak and feet, he climbed to his perch and settled down to watch TV. Leon turned on the set and sat. You know, Barty, he said. Barty hopped to his shoulder. I'm not going to that meeting. Even if they lift the ban, it won't help us lumbermen for long. When all the big trees are cut down, we won't have jobs anyway. Every day, Barty joined Leon in the shower. It was one of his great pleasures. He preened and splashed water up under his wings and into his head feathers. When he discovered that the other members of his family also took showers, he joined them too. One day, Borden forgot to lift him out of the stall, and the owlet sat there, wet and bedraggled, for almost an hour before Leon found him. Leon dried him off, then took out a sheet of paper and a marker. He made a sign that said, Remove owl after showering. He hung it by the shower stall. At 1 a.m., the alarm went off, and Leon took Barty into the living room for his early morning western. You know, Barty, he said as the owlet hopped to the back of the couch, 
It's a good thing you're not a spotty because I've come to like you a whole lot. About a week later, Jimmy Olden came by the gas station and asked Borden if he could work some of Borden's hours. I really need the money, he said. My pop's out of work. Your pop? exclaimed Borden. But he's a fisherman. The rivers are full of fish. No, they're not, Jimmy replied. Not many salmon are coming up the Trinity anymore. They aren't, said Borden. How come? Overfishing with gill nets in the ocean, my dad said, and loggers clear-cutting inland. Clear-cutting erodes the soil, and mud gets in the streams and creeks, and fish eggs suffocate, so there's no fish. Borden stood quietly, thinking about what Jimmy had said. Then he picked up his coat. You can work right now if you want. I have some things I ought to do. Okay, that's the end of chapter 12. Um, for kids watching the video, Borden just learned something interesting about Jimmy's father and his work. And I want you to think about what is the connection between Borden's dad and his job and Jimmy's dad and his job. So these two men have different jobs. One dad is a logger, the other dad is a fisherman. Both of them are out of work for different reasons, but there's definitely a connection here. There's a connection <clears throat> that seems to connect to our science unit on food chains and food webs and ecosystems. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and the kids who are here live will do a little discussion. And video kids, I will see you tomorrow for chapter 13. Bye.